We're now going to speak um, for the next 30 minutes about uterine cancer at MRI. So among gynecological malignancy, uterine, endometrial and cervical cancer represent the second and the fourth most common female cancer. The first one is breast cancer and the third one ovarian cancer. There is a staging system which is called the FIGO, Federation International Gynecological and Obstetrics System, which does not include MRI. For cervical cancer, it is a clinical classification and for endometrial, it is histological classification. But MRI has proved to be the most accurate non-invasive modality for staging cancers and helps with risk stratification and making treatment decisions. So we will begin with uh, uterine cervical cancer. It is ranking 8 of all women cancer. In France, this is 3,400 new cases per year. And the prevalence is higher in Africa and Asia. The incidence is hoped to step down with the introduction of the HPV vaccine, which is called Gardasil. But unfortunately, there is still 25 to 30% HPV insensitive to this vaccine. The prognosis of this cancer is still uh, severe, and especially for locally advanced cases, for survival rates, but also for fertility, because this is a cancer of uh, young women, and for treatment complications. The prognostic is around 90% for FIGO stage 1, and is stepped down to 17% for FIGO stage 4. The FIGO staging system has two aims. The first is to stratify patients to the optimum treatment group, uh, that means primary surgery versus combined chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And the second aim is the prognostic. It always works the same uh, for uh, cervix cancer and endometrial cancer. Stage, well, stage one will be confined to the organ of origin. Stage two, invasion of surrounding tissues. Stage 3, spread to tissues within the pelvis or distant nodes. And stage 4, mucosal invasion of other organs within the pelvis, that is bladder and rectum, or distant metastasis. So we will see step by step each uh, stage of this uh, cancer. Let's begin with the stage 1. It is a limited cancer to the cervix. You can't see stage 1 at MRI, you only can see stage 1B. This is a visible lesion and it can be 1B1 when it's less than 4 cm or 1B2 when it's more than 4 cm. This threshold 4 cm is very important because tumors with a maximum diameter above 4 cm are not amenable to primary radical surgery. The FIGO stage 2 uh, is the extension of the cancer outside of the cervix and in the vagina, but just the, two third, the upper, two, upper two thirds of the vagina. This is the stage 2A. And 2B is the parametrial invasion. Then you have the, the stage 3. 3A is the lower third of the vagina, vagina, and 3B, it is parietal invasion until pelvic mur, and it also can uh, be um, non-functional kidney or hydronephrosis because of the, of the ureter which is uh, invaded. And at least stage 4, it's when the rectum or bladder is uh, invaded, or 4B for distance spreading. So what are the indications of MRI in cervical cancer? It is an accurate system for staging above 1A and it is also very important for post-treatment evaluation, for suspicion of recurrence and suspicion of treatment side effects. The protocol you have to, um, to do for uh, staging cervical cancer is uh, this one. You have to do at least two T2 sequences without fat suppression for morphological analysis, for measuring the tumor, 
and you, you have to remember the threshold of four centimeters. And also for uh, parametrial invasion, you have to do axial oblique plane, orthogonal to cervical channel. The T2 sequences, axial T2 sequences must cover uh, pelvis and abdominal until left renal vein for lymph node staging. What about uh, IV contrast? It is an optional uh, sequence because most cervical tumors are very easily detectable on T2. IV injection is recommended in uh, some uh, of the, these following cases. When the lesion is very small, when you have to, um, to find if bladder or rectal is really invaded, when you are uh, on post-treatment evaluation, when you have a problem-solving case in recurrence versus fibrosis, like in this case, it was a recurrence. It was not so uh, easy to, uh, to say with a T2, or a problem of uh, fistula. And in this case, dynamic injection is uh, recommended. This is a dynamic injection for uh, cervical cancer. You see this huge cervical cancer. You see how you can, um, you can see it in T2. And this is uh, without injection, one minute after injection and four minutes after injection. You see that the cancer is not uh, so enhanced that, than the uh, myometrum. This is an example of uh, IV contrast input. You see this uh, ca cervical cancer on T2. You can see the tumor here, but it's not very clear what's happening for the vagina. In this case, the IV contrast is very uh, interesting because you clearly see that you're in uh, stage 3A with the lower sort of the va the vagina uh, invaded. What about diffusion imaging? Cervical cancer in diffusion is hyperintense signal with low ADC. Some uh, uh, published studies uh, um, are trying to correlate the ADC value with the tumor grade. But uh, it's, not very, um, it's not very important for diagnostic. We will see later uh, why it's an important sequence. For lymph node, you will find high signal diffusion in uh, benign and malignant lymph node. So it's uh, for detection, but it's not very accurate to, uh, for the specificity. This is an example of diffusion in, uh, can in cervix cancer. You clearly see this big cancer, 1B2 with high signal diffusion and low ADC. But the real input of diffusion in cervix cancer is for recurrence detection. You have to keep in mind that you, can, you, you have to do diffusion for recurrence uh, detection, but not at the, um, for staging uh, the cancer at the beginning. Because the um, lesions of recurrence will be hyperintense and very easy to detect on an MRI. And there is also a real input for post-treatment evaluation and you will uh, be able to um, make the difference between inflammatory changes, which are high signal diffusion and high ADC, and residual tumor, which uh, will be high signal and diffusion but low ADC. Here are some examples of post-treatment evaluation. You can see here a post-treatment evaluation uterus with a fibrotic uh, cervix on T2. After injection there is no enhancement and you can see uh, no um, high signal diffusion. It was a complete response. In this case, this patient was, was um, followed up uh, until two years after treatment. You see this high signal in T2 and you're asking if it is a uh, recurrence illness or inflammatory changes. When you see at the diffusion, you can see high signal and low ADC. It was a recurrence. This is another example when you see the actual T2 for, uh, on, uh, when you see this patient, she had a treatment before for uh, cervix cancer. It's very clear to detect the, um, the recurrence here in high signal diffusion that you can see here on T2. In this case, you uh, follow this patient. She had an hysterectomy after cervix cancer. 
and maybe if you just perform the T2, you will miss the osseous recurrence that you clearly can see on diffusion. For lymph node extension, uh, I already told you that slices must cover pelvis and abdomen. And most common lymph node seeds are iliac and infrarenal periodic nodes. Positive uh, nodes are considered positive on MRI if short axis is more than 10 millimeters. But there is a major input on uh, PET CT. And PET CT is mandatory to detect uh, our periodic lymph node in case of normal NRM and stage above 1B2. And in case of negative PET scan, uh, it is recommended to uh, do a lymph node dissection. This is an example of a false, negative, false positive uh, TEP scan. You can see here the tumor, cervix tumor. And the TEP scan detected something here. And when you see the T2, what is it? Ovary. Ovary. This is a false positive of PET, of PET scan. So now some examples of uh, cervical cancer. This is a stage 1B1. It's limited to the cervix and it's <coughs> less than 4 centimeters. You can see here the tumoral signal. This is a 1B2 stage. It's a huge cancer, but it's still limited to the cervix. This uh, cancer is uh, extending in the upper third of the vagina. And now let's talk uh, about parametrial invasion, which is the stage 2B. It is an important uh, stage. The parametrium is the anatomical space lateral to the cervix. You will, if the parametrial is invaded, you will find irregular margins or interruption of the T2 hyperintense cervical ring. The accuracy of MRI for detecting parametrial invasion is quite good, around 80%. You can find proximal parametrial invasion, like in this case. Here is the cervical ring and here is the parametrial invasion. Or also distal parametrial invasion, like in this case, where the tumor is going uh, more distant than the cervix. Here is an example of a 3A, lower third of the vagina is invaded, and a 3B with a pelvic invasion, mural pelvic invasion, and hydronephrosis. And at least this is a stage 4, and you can, you can see the invasion of the bladder wall here, in, in actual also. What are future prospects? Maybe future prospects are uh, the combination of PET scan and MRI, uh, which could have the advantage of high resolution and contrast on MRI images and uh, morphological analysis, no, for morphological analysis and functional analysis. It needs a close cooperation with nuclear specialists and it has uh, some limits like cost, availability, and there is still few study on gynecological malignancy. This is an example. You can find two nodes on the pelvix and one is uh, with uh, high activity and the other, no. Okay, let's uh, move uh, in endometrial cancer. <coughs> this is the first gynecological cancer. This is uh, 6,500 new cases per year in France. There are some risk factors like overweight, diabetes, and tamoxifen. The prognosis will vary according to stages, but the five years over survival is about 80%. And uh, fortunately, stage one includes more than 70% of all cancer cancers. MRI is uh, very important in endomet when endometrial cancer has been diagnosed by, by biopsy um, because it's very accurate for uh, staging the percentage of the myometrium invasion and also to detect invasion of cervical stroma or adjacent organs. In this case of cancer, 
it's not like in cervix cancer, the MRI must include perfusion analysis, analysis to determine myometrial invasion. Here is the FIGO stage of endometrial cancer. This is a stage one, the tumor is limited to uterus. The stage A is less than 50% of the myometrium and B more than 50%. Stage 2, the tumor is going into the, the cervical stroma. Stage 3, the tumor is um, going uh, on the serous, uh, in the uterine serous or adnexa. 3B, uh, vagina. And 3C, uh, lymph node. And stage four, the tumor is invading bladder or rectal or distant metastasis. So what is the MRI protocol for endometrial cancer? You have to perform two orthogonal scene sections T2 weighted sequences, the sagittal T2, and also an axial oblique orthogonal to endometrium. You will perform also dynamic contrast injection or delayed uh, contrast injection with high resolution sequences and also diffusion. So myometrial invasion is very ch challenging and in, uh, uh, usually um, the T2 is the key uh, sequence for evaluating this myometrial invasion because um, the intermediate signal intensity of the tumor is well delineated against the low signal intensity of the junctional zone. But this junctional zone is not very easy uh, to, uh, to find in uh, postmenopausal patients. So uh, there are common pitfalls in myometrial invasion assessment. Uh, like um, when zonal anatomy is less defined uh, in the postmenopausal patient uh, and when the tumor is iso intense relative to myometrium. When in small size uterus or atrophy uterus, in polypoid tumor or association with fibroma or adenomyosis, it, it could be quite challenging. That's why it's very important to uh, perform uh, dynamic contrast. Uh, or delayed contrast uh, sequences and diffusion in order to compare these three sequences to um, find if the, how the myometrium is invaded. Diffusion has a target uh, detection role. Like in this example, you clearly see the cancer in diffusion uh, very much more than in T2. It, it has a hyperintense signal and a low ADC. So it will increase the diagnosis confidence if it's, if it's associated to T2. But it's not a T2 substitute because it has still low spatial resolution even, even though there is a, a lot of progress with diffusion higher uh, resolution sequences. Like in this case, you can see for the same patient, this is a contrast enhanced uterus. You can't clearly see the, the limits of the tumor, but in this uh, very um, beautiful sequence of HD um, diffusion, you clearly see uh, the delimitation of the tumor. There are some pitfalls on diffusion, th so that's why it's mandatory to compare diffusion uh, with AD ADC. Because you will find normal structures with hyperintense signal on diffusion, like endometrium in second phase of cycle, visceral mucosae and lymph node. And you will also find some, some malignant hypointense lesion on diffusion. It is when um, malignant tumors uh, have a low tumor density. So here are some examples of uh, endometrial tumor. This is a stage 1A. You clearly see the cancer on T2, which is not evading the myometrium uh, more than 50%. Uh, uh, it's, it can be a bit challenging on T2, and you will be very helped in this case with uh, contrast enhancement, where the tumor is very limited on the endometrium. This is, on the contrary, uh, a case where uh, after uh, contrast injection, it is not so clear to uh, understand the uh, cancer limits, and it will be more accurate in T2. 
Here are two patients. One, in sta one is stage uh, A, uh, 1A, less than 50%. You can see here the cancer after injection. And this one is stage 1B, and it is uh, uh, more easy to see the tumor here on T2. This case uh, was a bit uh, challenging. It was very difficult to, uh, to see the tumor limitation on T2, and we were very uh, helped by the diffusion, where you can see that the myometrium is invaded more than 50% with low ADC. And it was after surgery uh, stage 1B. And you can also see on this example that the lymph node uh, will be more easy to detect on diffusion than in T2. There are some poor prognostic factors for uh, this uh, endometrial cancer, the stage, the grade, there are uh, three types of uh, grade of this tumor, and the histological subtype, subtype. there is three uh, histological subtypes uh, which, uh, which have a very poor prognosis. So uh, it will be very great if uh, when you, you perform an MRI for staging, you have these information. But in the real life, it's uh, very uh, rare for me. <laughs> and the age is also a poor pronostic factor. And nodal invasion, which is correlated to myometrial and cervical stroma invasion. You will find only 3% of uh, no positive nodes in stage A, uh, 1A and um, uh, around 50% in stage 1B. So you can um, think um, when you see a lymph node, which is for, for you very uh, suspicious, uh, it's uh, more uh, frequent that the, the tumor stage is 1B. The treatment of this cancer, and uh, fortunately this cancer are discovered uh, at early stage on, on most of the cases, is hysterectomy, bilateral sanpego or phorectomy, and the lymphadenectomy is discussed, um, uh, is discussed on each patient depending on uh, the risk factors. And these risk factors are histological subtype, grade, and uh, the stage. So which is the, what is the impact for the radiologist to, to know this? is uh, that if a patient is categorized high risk, uh, for example, she is uh, stage 1A or 1B, and she has a, a clear cell carcinoma, which is a, a very uh, bad uh, risk factor, and periartic and the, the periartic and pelvic lymph node dissection will automatically be performed. So you don't have to uh, make fine analysis of myometrial invasion or lymph node detection in this case. But for the surgeon, you will uh, always have to detect vascular anatomic variation and peritoneal carcinomatosis. Again, future prospect, uh, it might be on uh, PET-MR. Um, uh, like in this case, you can see uh, the endometrial cancer, which has a high uh, activity and uh, some uh, lymph nodes and peritoneal uh, nodes. So what are the take-home messages for these two cancers on MRI? For cervical cancer, the MRI protocol uh, for the diagnostic is uh, it relies on T2 sequences and at least two uh, T2 uh, sequences. And for the follow-up, it's better to, uh, it's mandatory to uh, perform diffusion and perfusion sequences. On your report, mm -hmm. you will have to uh, talk about the tumoral size, parametrial invasion, vaginal invasion, pelvic sidewall or idonephrosis, bladder and rectal invasion, and lymph node, lymph node staging. On the opposite, for endometrial cancer, the initial protocol has to include T2 and contrast and diffusion sequences. And for your reports, uh, you will, it will be better if you uh, can uh, say the, um, the results of the biopsy, what kind of histological type and grade. Then you have to, um, to report the my myometrian invasion, cervical stroma invasion, ovaries, bladder and rectal vision and lymph node. I thank you.